guys. I hope that you guys are doing amazing wherever you are in the world. Guess where I am? I'm at my parents' house. Oh man, it's really, really fun to be back home. I haven't been with my parents for a few months now. Um, and so it's kind of weird for me because I feel like I'm like, I'm like in a real house. <laughs> What's going on here? Anyways. Um, in today's video, I wanted to speak to you guys about a little bit more about empaths and how it's actually really interesting what I've been noticing a lot more of my empathic quality coming through, especially since my parents are both uh, dealing with major surgeries in the le recent past. Like they both had heart surgery, so they had the bypass surgery, right? And I've actually noticed it's really interesting as an empath that when my parents started getting heart pain, and they were in Toronto, and I was in Thailand, okay? So it's really, really far off distance. My dad, not so much, but because I'm closer to my mom, and I'm more connected to my mom, and my mom is very intuitive herself. So when they're two empaths, they're so powerfully connected, and they're so powerfully integrated into each other's lives, and they're powerful empaths, what happens is that if one person's feeling something, the other person feels it as well. It's not only true for twins, you know, you might be thinking, oh, that's only true for twins. No, it's actually true for any empath who's connected to each other, okay? So my mom, she's a brilliant empath. She herself feels very much so as, as things go, go on. She is an ENFJ, so she's basically the same as me, except she's an extrovert, a major extrovert, by the way. Um, and so she likes a lot of noise, and it's really hard for me to be around her for too long because she likes a lot of noise all, all the time. Uh, but she's an empath, and as I said, she recently had heart surgery. But when she started getting heart pain, and she started, you know, getting her chest really, really hurting, and she's like, maybe I should go to the hospital, maybe I shouldn't, she was debating that. In that exact moment, around that moment, when I was at home, I was feeling that pain. You know, I was in Thailand, I was on the other side of the world, about 10,000 miles away, I think. I think that's an estimated distance. And I was so far away, and I started feeling this pain in my chest. Now you guys are probably going to think that I'm insane, blah, blah, blah. That's okay. That's totally fine with me, actually, because, you know, people think we're crazy all the time. The only reason why I want to share this with you guys is because, first of all, because it really excites me. Because, first of all, it, because it means that there is the communication possible over long distances. We don't actually need to be face-to-face -face with each other in order to communicate with each other. And if you read The Field by Lynn McTaggart, you know that that's a possibility. So that really excites me because it's the possibilities are endless with that, right? But more so than that, if you're an empath, you have to be really careful if you're feeling anything at all. Like if you're feeling anything at all. I'm in my parents' house right now, as I said, and you can, guys can see in the back, it's really beautiful. I really love this house. My parents are sick right now. Not only do they have heart surgery, but my mom has a cough right now. And my dad has a cough. My, my dad has a constant cough. My mom has a cough right now. And it's funny, guys, you guys can probably hear my throats are a little raspy right now because I have gotten my mom's cold. Now, as soon as I landed, I felt really good about myself. I was really, I was really happy and I was really grateful and the flight was great and I was feeling really, really healthy. But as soon as I saw my mom coughing and hacking all night long, all of a sudden, a day later, I'm sick out of blue. Now, I'm not saying that all of it has to do with the empathic nature of my body or the empathic nature of my spirit or the empathic nature of my mind. Not all of it has to do with that. Obviously, some of it has to do with the fact, with the fact that maybe someone sneezed in the plane and I got those germs in my, in my body or because my immune system was down because of traveling so much or whatever it might be. There might be some of the reasons for it. But the only reason I mention these stories to you because it's so poignant to me in this moment in time, it really proves to me that we have to be really careful as empaths to realize that not all of it, not all of the stuff that's happening around us and inside of us is because of something outside of us. For example, if you are feeling sick, it not, might be because your sister is sick or and you're taking on her qualities or your brother is sick or or someone you know or love is far away from you is sick or or someone that you care about is sick. You know, you don't know. You don't know what the real reason is. Now, I'm not saying that you guys become paranoid and start testing everything with like a with a fine tooth comb and seeing, oh, is that, is that the reason I'm sick? The only reason I'm actually mentioning this to you guys is because it makes you a little bit more aware of what's going on around and inside of you, right? Even though I know that partly I'm sick because of the travel, because of the stress of travel, blah, 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 just noticing the fact that I became sick in the same way that my mom is sick is really, really, really fascinating to me. It's really, really interesting. And the more aware I've become of myself, of my body, of the world, of how I move to the world, the more interesting life can become because 
everything kind of has a hidden meaning behind it. It's not just random coincidences that are happening all around you all the time. Everything has a purpose to it. Everything has a reason for it. Everything has some kind of hidden cachet to it. I don't know how to explain it to you guys. It really makes things for me really magical. And I live in a world where the possibilities are endless. Now, I also want you guys to be careful if you're an empath, and especially if you're a very powerful empath, because not only about being sick and all that stuff, but also when you're feeling something, like if you're feeling an emotion. I notice myself doing that when all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I'll be going around happy-go-lucky, yay, I'm so happy, la la la. And then all of a sudden I'll stop and I'll start feeling really terrible about myself. I'll be like, I'm so sad, well, why, what happened? I'm so sad all of a sudden, my heart hurts, blah, 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 blah. And I'm thinking to myself, where did this come from, this emotion? Where did it come from? I have no idea. I've talked to you guys already about the fact that emotion leaves footprints all throughout the atmosphere, all throughout the place where it is. So if someone has been walking on the same path that you are walking on, and they had this really intense sadness inside of them because they just lost someone, and you walked on that same pathway and you passed through that emotion cloud, if you want to call it, there's emotion all around us, all the time. Some of it's positive, some of it's negative. Some of the emotion clouds that we're walking through are negative, but not only negative, they have a really, really powerful imprint so that if anyone walks to them instantaneously, especially if they're an empath, they're going to start feeling terrible about themselves. They're going to start feeling that intense emotion. I notice this when I walk through the places where there's a lot of grieving taking place. For example, if I go through to a funeral home or if I'm walking through a place where there's a lot of healing happening and there's a lot of grieving happening, a lot of bereavement, I notice that I start feeling a lot of emotions myself. Because I'm more aware of myself and I know that I have nothing to be upset about, or I have nothing, no, nothing to be sad about, I know that it's not my emotion, that I'm taking on someone else's emotion. And so I can actually just brush it off and just take it away from myself and move on, right? I feel it, I move onwards, and that's it. But if I was not aware, and if you guys are younger INFJs, if you're just a baby INFJ, you know, if you just figured out you're an INFJ, you're probably going to need this video a lot in the future, especially if you're an empath, a powerful empath, because you're probably going through life right now feeling a lot of emotions of the people around you, unaware that you're feeling all these emotions, unaware that they're not your emotions. Now, you have to be really careful because sometimes it's so easy to take on other people's emotions, so much so that we forget that we have our own emotions to deal with, right? So we're feeling everyone else's emotions and everyone around us and everyone else is terrible and feeling terrible and we're feeling terrible for them or around them. And we forget that there is something inside of us that needs to come out as well. You know, sometimes I'm moving to the world and I forget to feel my own feelings. I forget to feel my feelings because there's so many other people's feelings to feel. And that's the most, this is the most terrible thing ever. Like I seriously, I really hate that about my, my being an empath because I forget that, you know, I don't have time in the day to feel my own feelings. I forget that I have stuff to deal with as well. I have my own grief to deal with, not only other people's grief. I don't. I have my own stuff to deal with. I have my own intense emotions to deal with, not only other people's emotions, right? And so it's really important that we take that time to figure out, is this really my emotion or is it someone else's emotion? And as long as it's someone else's emotion, you can brush it off. It's not your responsibility to feel their emotion. It is not your responsibility to take on the emotions of the entire universe. It's not your responsibility to feel everyone else's stuff. It is not. Just be, just be careful of that. I know as an INF, you have a tendency, we have a tendency to pretend or believe that we are the saviors of the world and we have to take on everyone's stuff and we are the only strong ones on the planet and if we don't do it, no one else is going to do it. It's all bullshit. It's all a way to not feel your own stuff and not to live your own life because we're living everyone else's life. We're living everyone else's emotions. You can't do that to yourself, right? So that's another thing that I really want to warn you, especially if you're a younger INFJ. Start feeling your own emotions. Stop feeling only other people's stuff, okay? And if you are an empath, really be careful. Really, really notice your emotions. So figure out, is this my stuff or is it someone else's stuff that I'm carrying around with me? Really be careful with that, okay? I hope this makes sense to you guys. I just wanted to share this with you guys because obviously I'm dealing with it right now and I thought it was interesting and I'm really, really grateful 
for all this time that I have with you guys. I hope that you guys find these videos useful. If you guys have any questions at all, please message me anytime. I'm here to answer your questions. I'm here to be there for you guys, okay? All right, thank you again, and I shall see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.